Hey guys, it's Laura Dabbles here and I have another book review for you guys, but first I wanted to just say that I'm I apologize for having not posted anything uh, for a quick minute. My allergies have been really bad and as I'm sure you can hear I still sound a little bit congested or at least I feel like when I hear my own voice inside it feels very congested still. Um, when I say I was blowing my nose every two to five minutes for two days straight, I'm not kidding. Um, I probably filled like a gallon bucket with mucus, like it was not pretty. It was not pretty at all. I couldn't even work, so I'm like, ah, like, ah, I was really stressed that I couldn't go to work, but it is what it is. Thank God I had money saved up. But anywho, we're going to get into the book that we're reviewing today. The Intercession of Spirits by Ted Andrews. This is one of the first metaphysical books that I read. I wanted something on spirit communication. So for me, this book was not what I was looking for, but it was what I needed, if that makes sense. So uh, one of my friends at the metaphysical bookshop I go to all the time is the Magic Cauldron here in Houston. If you're ever visiting Houston, you have to go in there. If you live in Houston, you probably already do. But yes, um, they uh, recommended I read this book. So the first couple chapters, because I was very much a skeptic when I first started um, reading about spirits, mainly I wanted to read about spirit communication because I spoke to spirits as a kid, right? And I just wanted to know if it was real if it was my imagination, or if my mom just made it all up for attention, right? So I was being extremely skeptical about everything. And so this was the best book for me, honestly, because this is an autobiography about Ted Andrews' life. And if you have ever read any of his books and you really like his books, you've got to read this one. This one is amazing. I can't say enough good things about it, honestly. So the first couple of chapters, I was kind of like, okay, fairies and unicorns and mm -hmm, all right, that's a little wacky, right? <laughs> but then he starts talking about his childhood, right? His childhood growing up in a toxic, abusive environment with a lot of dysfunction, right? And I liked the way that he dealt with it right in in his writing because I, I grew up in that right toxic abusive dysfunction right and there are some genuinely very funny moments that can happen in that family it's not like you know families like that don't love each other right but they can still hurt each other a lot despite the fact that they love each other and have very funny moments it's a very complicated um, topic and he dealt with it in such a genuine and respectful way because that's something for me that's really hard for me to talk about my childhood because I don't want to be disrespectful to my family members but I also don't want my friends to hate my family members because if you say oh hey I have a family member who said this to me or did this to me or blah 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 then your friends or your partner is going to be like Oh, I hate your family now. And so it's like, oh no, like I don't want them to hate my family, like, right? So the way that he deals with it is very I could take notes on this, right? And be like, okay, this is how I can tell people about my family. Right? But it also gave me something very deep in common with Ted Andrews that I didn't think I had anything in common with this very you know, I find him to be very enlightened in his readings, right? I find his readings to be very thoughtful, right? And and very, he's very experienced. And I didn't think I'd have anything in common with someone like that. And then it was like, wow, I have a lot in common with him. I would go, like, we didn't have a forest in our backyard, but I would go to the backyard and just breathe outside, right? And he would go, he had a forest, he would go out there and he would see different spirit animals and, you know, even humanoid spirits and things like that. And some people might say that that's a figment of his imagination from all the stress and trauma. No, no, I had very similar experiences. I have had the most vivid 
spiritual spirit visits spiritual visits when i am in my darkest hour right that's whenever spirits have come to me without me trying to force anything they just come in right it's kind of like if you're walking down the street and you see a stray animal that's hurt, like a wounded bird or something, and you go, oh, and you just can't help it. You have to pick up that bird and, and try to put it in a box and feed it, right? We've all had that moment. Or like a little kitten that's just still has its eyes closed and is stumbling and you don't know where its mom is and you're like, oh my God, it needs help. I need to help this poor little being. Like, oh, I feel like the spirits feel that way about us when they see us in pain, right? They want to come and they want to comfort us, right? I totally believe that. And it's because of this book that I'm like, okay, I think I think that this is a thing that spirits do to us that we do to animals, right? Anyway, so. My windows are open and now I feel subconscious because my neighbor just walked by. Anyway. So, um, yeah, I really, really like how he handles the kind of magic that he does. It's very practical. It's very nature-based. It's animal-based, right? And it's, some people will call it shamanic, right? But he has an entire section, I forget where it is, but it's like, I am not a shaman, right? And it's that point at which he's like, I do incorporate a lot of shamanic practices, but I would never call myself a shaman because shamans were more of a, they were very medicinal, right? They, they performed so many different functions in the community than just being a spiritual leader or a spiritual arbiter between, you know, our world and the other worlds, right? A shaman was so much more than that, right? A shaman was was the scientist, the the doctor, the everything, and served their community as such, right? Not just someone who communicates with the animals around them and goes on spirit journeys, right? He really talks about the importance of what a shaman is to their community, what a real shaman is to their community and why he would never appropriate that title for himself. And I was like, that is amazing because I don't really, I've always been very off put by people who call themselves the shamans, right? Of course, I love the techniques. Just, just as Ted Andrews incorporates shamanic techniques, so do I, and I enjoy them very much. But I would never have the balls to say I'm a shaman when I know damn well I'm not. And so Ted Andrews has an entire section on that as well. As you can see, I very much connected with Ted Andrews because like every time I say something about Ted Andrews, I'm always bringing it back to me. That's because this book really does bring you up close and personal with Ted Andrews' life and his, his deep, deep core beliefs, right? that it's very easy to feel like, oh wow, you know, we're so similar, we're so similar. And I like that because it it literally does it. It brings you in and it, and it invites you to draw these parallels, right? Ted Andrews wants you to feel like you can do all of these things too, right? A lot like, you know, the reason why people love Matt Oren's Psychic Witch book, right, is because he's like, everyone has these abilities. Everyone has these abilities. You just need to hone them and practice them. Ted Andrews has the same core belief as well, right? So there's not a lot of practicum in this book. It's kind of it's kind of um, strewn throughout the book, but the appendix has a lot of practicum in it. For the most part, this is an autobiography. This is getting to know Ted Andrews and his life and kind of why he, how he came to the beliefs that he has and why those beliefs are important to him. And to me, that is so much more useful than someone just saying, I believe this because blank. It's like, here's this whole life experience and because I had this experience, now I know, right, these things here, right? 
Um, like here, we have spiritual responsibility. He's got a whole little thing on this in his one chapter called The Teaching Path. And this is talking about him being a teacher. Through the years, I have been impressed by spirit innumerable times about teaching and its responsibilities. Authors and teachers have a number of very important ones. First, they have a responsibility to bring a passion to their writing, teaching, and the subject should be one in which they are very well schooled themselves. In the case of how-to books in the metaphysical and psychic realm especially, the author should always be able to demonstrate the techniques and, and activities proficiently. Misinformation, knowledge, and fear. There exists the idea in modern society that if something is in print, especially in the nonfiction realm, then it must be true. Desiring something to be true and, it actu and its actual validity are often quite distant from each other. Some perceptions lead to dabbling, insufficient preparations, and ultimately a variety of problems down the road, especially for those who immerse themselves in the phenomenal world of spirits and all of its dimensions. Right? So, very, very well written, very well um, versed, right, in the um, consequences, right, of these things. Let's do, let me show you some of the appendices because he talks also to, oh, this, these pages are really great. This is actually not even the appendix yet. This is uh, in his attending to spirit chapter. Discerning false psychism. You may not understand the message, but accept it because it sounds educated. We are told to accept message. We are told to accept a message because the spirit entity is or was a higher teacher. It often cannot be proved. It provides no additional teachings, only reflections of teachings of others or teachings which cannot be verified. Material hides behind vague and distant prophecies that pressure your emotions. All of these would be false psychism, right? False channeling is on the other page. Growing infusion of idea that everything needed for growth and evolvement can be found within. A variety of nervous and emotional problems manifest within three to five years. Nervous system degenerates. When entities quit working through the channel, their withdrawal stimulates imbalances, poor health, and general degeneration on many levels. That's when you should know that you're not channeling things properly, right? Anyway. Doo -doo -doo. I want to find the appendix. Okay, here we go. Um... This is where all of the practicum is, like how to do things. In his appendix C on how to see spirits, he literally says, all of us have one sense that is usually a little stronger than the others. Some people are just more visual, but others are more auditory. Some people feel more easily. Some people can smell or taste more effectively. No matter which sense is stronger though, we can still learn to experience spirit through all of our senses. Fred, Fred. I apologize. He got frisky there for a minute. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even... Okay, he's just gonna watch me now from the top of the fridge. Okay. <clears throat> acupressure for seeing spirit. So if you tap or press on these acupressure points, it can help stimulate your visual senses, right? Things like that. Uh, he has other acupressure points on the back of the head. Things like that. Again, very, very practicum, very do this, do that, do this, do that, right? He also has one about making spirit cloths in Appendix B. Wouldn't it be great to have a magic carpet that could transport you to other worlds and times? Then he explains how you can have a symbolic magic carpet, right? Making a spirit travel shroud or something of the like, right? In fact, it was after reading this chapter or appendix, I should say, that I was like, oh, wow, like I make yarn from scratch, 
I knit things out of that yarn. I've made something from floof to finished product many times. What if I did this with a spiritual intention and charged it as I was making it? That's where I got the whole idea for spiritually intentioned spinning, right? And doing spirit cloths, all because of this book. Ted Andrews has a lot of very popular books. He also wrote Animal Speak. This is one of his most uh, well-known and best-selling works, Animal Speak. There are workbooks. There's a lot of very similarly titled books uh, as this one. He's got the pocket guide, which I have up, up there somewhere. I like his little pocket guide because it basically just has the different animals and you can just look them up. So if I see an animal in a dream, I go for that, for that pocket guide of his, the little animal speak pocket guide. But this book <clears throat> this book is excellent. I'm reading it off and on between the other books I'm currently reading, but so far I definitely see why this book by Ted Andrews is one of his most well-known works. It's very, very well done, and it's on a topic that all of us wish we knew a little bit more about, which was communicating with animals and communicating with nature via animal symbolism, right? Uh, Ted Andrews has a lot of other books on a lot of different topics. I also have one of his more practicum books called How to Read the Aura, and it's a little tiny paperback, but he's quite, he's quite a prolific author. You might want to look at some of his work and give him a shot. Of course, this review is about his autobiography, and he is a person, you can learn a lot from his experiences. I love autobiographies. Uh, of people who lived a very thoughtful and spiritual life on this earth and have a lot to share in that regard. He's a very positive person, but he's not all love and light. I hope that in this book review that I have shown that he's a very well-grounded and honest about the dangers involved in magic and spirit travel and channeling specifically about channeling and that he is not going to lead you astray and he if he writes about something he's going to really know his stuff before he writes about it and uh <clears throat> he is one of my trusted authors so if i'm looking for a book on a subject and i find that ted andrews has one i will buy the one that ted andrews wrote before i buy one whose authorship i'm not as familiar with right so I hope that you guys enjoyed this book review and until next time, happy dabbling and bye-bye.